right, everyone. The first thing I want you to do is take your phone and open up your messages app and send a quick message to anyone. It can be the first person you see on your messages app. It can be the, someone that you haven't seen in a while. Just send them a message, and I'm going to do this with you guys. I'm going to text my mom while she's in the audience. See if she can see me. Hi, mom. All right. Did you guys get your messages in? So what did that take us, like 30 seconds or so? In today's world, all it takes is 30 seconds to reach out to someone across oceans and continents. 30 seconds to send a message. 30 seconds to email. 30 seconds to connect with a plethora of people online. And now we have advanced on to playing through avatars and Oculus. The metaverse is the newest advancement in the technological field that allows us to explore our physical surroundings in a virtual world. From Horizon Worlds by Facebook to Snapchat filters, the metaverse is all around us. But did Tim Lee know that when he was creating the internet, he was also creating a highly immersive virtual world where people gather to socialize? Hello everyone, my name is Anya Bhandari and today I'm going to talk about how you influence social technology. My first encounter with technology was when I joined this student-led organization called Future Business Leaders of America. I was in sixth grade and I signed up for the first competition I could see, multimedia and website design. The task was to create a website to advocate for that year's state service project. Keep Florida beautiful. Now this was a big task because I didn't really know how websites worked and it required me to know that to code one. So I turned to the first tool I could find, a website developer. Using Wix and Weebly, I created the website and in hindsight, that really wasn't the best way to do it, but it got me started. And after the competition, I got certified in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, all languages that support website development. During my freshman year in high school, I created a productivity app to decrease the amount of procrastination in students and teachers alike. Using Power Apps in Microsoft, using DAX and X coding languages, I created this app and tested it on 130 students and 80 teachers across the Pinellas County region. The data stated that it was statistically significant indicating that my app truly did decrease procrastination. My latest endeavor in coding has been mobile application development. Now this particular app holds a very special sentimental value for me. This app has won the Congressional App Challenge and is currently being displayed in the US Congress. It has won $10,000 in grant money through the Next Gen Tech 360 program and has Kevin Harrington, one of the original sharks on Shark Tank, on its board of advisors. Greenprint, now known as Greener Self, is a carbon footprint tracking app that reduces your carbon footprint through daily activities. From plastic bottle trackers to gas consumption analysis, this app serves to shape your habitual actions towards sustainability. Using cross-platform applications like React Native, Google Firebase, and Flutter, this app has taught me about the true impact of technology on societal issues, bringing users together to serve a common goal, global warming. These advancements from bulky laptops to sleek phones that hold on to these and host multiple applications at the same time have truly built a community and inspired innovation in the industry. But community and technology is not limited to coding. In eighth grade, I created my first robotic arm and it was featured as a semi-finalist for Broadcom Masters, the National Science Fair for middle school students. The coding was done in C++, and it had hardware 
uh, technical and electrical facilities using Arduino, a type of microprocessor. Through these steps, I understood more about technology, more about the world. I finally realized that all of this had a purpose. And my purpose for this project was to decrease human interaction between toxic and non-toxic medical waste in a hospital setting. Shout out to Ms. Himmel for holding Science Fair and giving us the opportunity to do so. Now this, it inspired me to not keep what I have learned to myself. So I currently work on robotics through the First Inspires program, joining their first tech challenge and first robotics competition team, as well as mentoring for the first Lego League team, consisting of elementary and middle school students interested in the field of robotics. I'm actually judging their regionals tomorrow, but the one core value that FIRST teaches all of these students is cooperation. Cooperation is implemented when cooperation overshadows competition. So many times I have seen students working on different teams coming together to help solve that one coding issue in debugging or lending out a tool before you go into the pit lanes. The building the sense of community through robotics is what keeps us as the next generation continuing into innovation. Speaking of cooperation, I was offered the opportunity to delve into the graduate community of technology. A Georgia Tech professor offered to mentor me in the field of biotechnology. And during this time, I developed a cancer identifier to reduce wait times between oncology reports and diagnosis of certain types of cancer. Through these efforts, I qualified to compete for Florida State Science Fair this month. And that has its own sense of community, encouraging students to create solutions using science, technology, and engineering. We do all of these to come together and find a common goal. The main purpose of all of these projects that I have presented to you today is what we have to ask ourselves. Why are we creating the tech that we are creating? What problem is it solving? When we ask ourselves these questions, we realize that all tech has a social purpose that it addresses because tech that is purposeful is useful. Facebook connects people. Microsoft creates documents. Robotic arms manage waste management. Alexa, well, she's a voice assistant. But all of these things bring together and unite people with their needs and wants. And that's the true essence of technology. We are here today to learn about how you influence it. Take a look around you. It took 30 seconds for you to contact someone, 30 seconds to use a piece of tech to find any information you want in the world. And that is the beauty of it. Technology unites people through the culmination of problems waiting to be solved. So I ask you today, if you see a need and you have the means to address it, do it. Make that change. If your tech only helps five people, it doesn't matter because you still made a difference. So tell me, how are you part of this community? Thank you.